Okay, hi Choi. So thank you for joining us today um, and to be interviewed for the Wide, uh, Wise Words podcast. I would like to first start off by um, having you introduce yourself, uh, your major, what made you want to come to UT Dallas and what organizations you're a part of. Absolutely, and thank you guys for having me on the, yeah. uh, the podcast. It's very fantastic work to get a chance to give back and get a chance to share yeah. my story a little bit. Uh, so yes, my name is Troy Murray. I am a junior marketing major and theater minor here at UT Dallas. I also am a pro sales concentration uh, track major, along with the fact that I am a part of the fast track program. So I'm going to be getting my master's in about just five years, which is very exciting. Uh, I am originally from Las Vegas, aka Sin City, and I go by he, him pronouns. Uh, and not to mention that I am quite involved here at UT Dallas. Not only do I serve as the executive executive director for the JSOM Undergraduate Dean's Council, but I also serve in a wide variety of other positions, including the Traditions Executive Chair for the Student Ambassador Program, I am a tour guide for our university, and I'm a part of a wide variety of other organizations, ranging from a freshman mentor, as well as involvement in the professional program in sales, and I'm involved in the theater department. That's awesome. I mean, you're part of so many organizations and you're so involved. Um, and that actually leads into my next few questions about networking. Um, being a part of these many organizations and events, um, I guess, what would you suggest or give advice to new students who are looking to be involved and as involved in organizations and trying to start off their journey just like you? That's a really great point and a really good question to answer. I have found a great level of success from doing networking just from the capability of reaching out. I think that there is a very common demographic, especially within people coming to JSOM, especially coming off of things like the pandemic and things of that yeah. nature. Uh, a lot of people have that hesitancy to actually reach out to individuals and get a chance to get connected with resources that are necessary. So when I initially at first came here during my time at UCD, I had found myself just talking to anybody I could get a chance to talk with. You know what I mean? Ranging from students that were involved in my classes to some of the faculty members that were teaching the various lectures, mm -hmm. um, just to some of the individuals that were like the high overseers. I remember that I had directly had spoken with Julie Hayworth, who was the marketing director for JSOM, uh, within the first couple of days that I was here. And from that capability, I was able to get acquainted with a lot of really great opportunities, get a chance to uh, learn a lot more about key resources. And it's from those outreaches that you become vivid in a lot of people's mm -hmm. eyes. So by simply having, uh, by getting in front of other people and just simply making yourself aware of who you are and making people know of who you are, people are then more inclined to be the first level of contact when they're reaching out to you about opportunities, about levels of success, and just getting involved more in whatever cultural environment you find yourself in. My next question is, you manage such a group, like large group of people, including the Dean's Council right. um, and all these other organizations. So how do you, I guess, like balance that and what do you really like um, improve on to manage that big of a group of people and lead them? That's a really great question too. I have always <laughs> had this idea of wanting to always get involved and you know partake in a wide variety of organizations. And over that course of time of getting involved and just having that involvement, I realized that burnout really does exist. <laughs> and it's a really big crucial factor that a lot of people like me at first just don't want to believe because they think they have this just What's, what the part I want to say is that they have this unlimited supply of energy that they can just exhort yes. every single day and it kind of makes them uh, have this idea that I'll never burn now, I'll be able to handle it all, it just matters. And then you go back at the end of the day and you realize you're sleeping in and you realize you're not getting an adequate amount of food intake and you're not applying yourself as best as you can as time goes on. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, I've always made it a goal to myself, especially within the last couple of semesters, to just give myself that free time that I've necessarily needed, uh, whether it be personal time to myself, partaking in a passion that I enjoy. Uh, for instance, I am a really big fan of stand-up comedy, and so I will go, sometimes we'll go on YouTube and get a chance to watch some stand-up comedians and just get a chance to laugh things out, dissociate from the work that I'm currently doing, because by having that level of disconnect and being able to, you know, have a definitive end to the work that you're doing and allowing yourself to just breathe, it ultimately gives you that idea that you can now then come back with a better mindset and then be able to complete your work to the best of your ability. So by having that level of free time and just committing those those individual personal times uh, that are necessary in order to succeed has allowed me to take on so much on my plate and still be able to maintain that on a regular basis. Yeah, that's amazing advice. Thank you. Um, and leading more into that, I guess, uh, what experience have you had, um, your past experience or your current experience, like being a leader that has helped you uh, accomplish your professional goals in the future, like towards those goals and that has helped you grow towards them? Right, and that's a very good question I should mention too. 
Now, the one thing that I always talk about with leadership, right, is the idea that as a leader, you're if you're not getting any takeaway from a leadership position, you shouldn't be in that leadership position to begin with, right? You shouldn't, the one thing that I realize, uh, most, some students that I've encountered over the course of my time here at UTD, they will take on leadership just for the sake of having a resume booster. You know what I mean? They don't go into it with the idea of, oh, I want something out of this, I want to personally grow from this, or I can obtain something from this position, right? Some people will simply go with the idea of, this will look good on a resume, it will impress a recruiter, but then they don't have anything to back it up when the recruiter says, what is your takeaway from that situation? So the one thing that I've always had whenever I've gone into a leadership position is ask myself, how can I grow from this? What can I ultimately achieve from this? And what's the end goal at the end of the day? So by having that clear vision and that perspective of what it's going to amount to is something that a lot of students should kind of reflect on and get a chance to learn more about. Because if you, like I, as I was mentioning, if there's no goal at the end of the day, why are you in that position to begin with? You know what I mean? You have to have a definitive reason as to how it complements your career, your personal life, or how it's going to help you expand personally. That's great advice, honestly. Um, I think every leadership position should be taken for someone who wants to grow and you know achieve goals. Um, and I guess uh, one of my last few questions for you is, uh, what are your professional goals? Um, what are you planning to do after graduation? Um, and I guess, what is your um, end career goal here? Absolutely. Now, I think it's always a, a big tandem with a lot of students, right? Where they're in a college setting, you're having that idea of like what you want to do with the rest of your life. It's a big decision. It, it literally <laughs> surmounts to what you want to do and yes. your direction you want to go into. Uh, ideally, at this moment in time, I would say that my goals would be to go into more a uh, sales oriented goal. Uh, being able to sell those things, I also recently have partaken in a pro sales competition where I had realized my love for sales as I ended up placing first overall. So it was a really cool element. Thank That's you. I, thank you, girl. I appreciate that. So ideally, I would love to go and actively pursue more of a sales uh, capability and get a chance to uh, pursue that full time if the opportunity presents itself. And that's kind of where uh, all of my things that I'm participating in ultimately lead to that end goal, right? Of either uh, pretending a sales goal in, in something like entertainment, which I've grown up in throughout my entire life, or maybe something else, depending on what the, the product is and what I'm passionate about. Um, so depending on what that industry kind of entails, I'm always making sure that I'm tailoring everything that I'm utilizing and uh, taking part in during my time at UTD and making sure that everything that I'm doing, I'm amounts to that end goal, which includes things like taking on a sales internship at AT&T and uh, specializing in the entertainment industry, or taking on a prominent leadership position within uh, the tour recruitment group and knowing that uh, complementing and working directly for customer service, helping to tailor that into that element too, because if you're selling the university to these incoming students, you'll be able to help sell an entertainment system to a potential family or a business that might need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So finding those connections, finding those elements will ultimately allow you to go into that end goal. And so my end goal at the end of the day is to find a prominent position within the sales marketing world, wherever that may look like, and hopefully use that as a stability means for helping to provide for the family that I ultimately will get a chance to raise in the future, or just making myself better off in the long run. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and I'm sure you'll achieve everything, so. Thank you, girl, I appreciate uh, that. That's amazing, thank you so much. Um, you know, this was so informational, and I'm sure our students will definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy day to sit down with me and answer all of my questions, so. Thank you, um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sruthi. I yeah. appreciate your time. I appreciate it.